الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام وعلى رسول الله أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته ومغفرة brothers and sisters I'm brother Mohamed Hoblos here all the way from Australia I'm brother Ali Da'wa do you know him? no salam okay was that my cue to give salam? salam alaykum salam alaykum um, okay, so make sure you click the subscribe button if you haven't already. Okay, Brother Muhammad is here on a tour with the One Ummah charity. All the links are going to be below, inshallah. If it's come, make sure to see if it's coming to a city near you and make sure you go, inshallah, it's for a good cause. Right, and today, Brother, because mashallah, you're involved in, uh, well, obviously, we in the da'wah, we call that raw da'wah, mashallah. Organic. Yeah, that organic da'wah. That, that, that. No hormones. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's that, it's, it's, that, it's, it's that school playground now, mashallah. So um, we're going to ask you some questions, inshallah. No. Um, we have a lot of young brothers and sisters that are, um, you know, alhamdulillah, uh, that are going through just the basic troubles and trials and tribulations that the youth go through, inshallah ta'ala. So you don't have to feel shy or sugarcoat the matter with these ones, because we're not preaching to the converted. The brothers and sisters, they know, yeah. We've got the, we've got the mad ones here. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what I'm saying? I would love, okay? So, um, so obviously the tour uh, of, uh, and, and the programs and the lectures are around the topic of returning back to the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala And that is going to be the solution for all the pain and problems in your life and in the ummah, right? So what are some of the main problems that you feel people are experiencing in their life? And what do you think are the reasons and the results of those problems? You start very gentle, huh? Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala um, problems are many. Everyone's got problems in their lives, and problems are inevitable. You will always <coughs> face issues in your life. It doesn't matter who you are and where you're from. Issues are there in our lives, and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala puts these issues there as a reminder for every single one of us that this world is not Jannah. You will never find complete peace and happiness in this world. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala designed that as such. As such, complete happiness is only in Jannah. So in this world, we'll always have our issues, our ups and downs. And the solution to everything is always Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's the king of kings. He's the one who's created the seven heavens and the earth. He's the one that sustains. He's the one that every single heart is in his hands, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he's the one that's in control. So our solution to anything and everything is always Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So um, what is it that you think is stopping people from seeing that solution? Like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has always been there. But people are not turning to Him. What do you think is preventing them from reaching out to Allah? They've done everything. They've gone to the doctor. Maybe it's a medical illness. Maybe they're depressed. They've gone to the counsellor. Maybe they've gone to financial advisors, money problems. But why, they, why, why don't they go to Allah? I think why is, is a bit difficult. Because there's many reasons to why we don't turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But I think sometimes we like to think that the solution to our problems is a complicated one. Sometimes we like to dwell in, into the idea that, you know, what I'm going through is very bad, it's very dramatic, and it's not an easy fix. But the truth is, no matter how big your issue is, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, everything is easy. You know, Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala simply has to say, Kun, you know, yeah, man, you know, um, you know, the one who's Amr, the one who's decree, whose order is as simple as kun, be. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can deal with all of your problems. I think the issue is, is that for a lot of us, we don't have that relationship with Allah. You know, um, you know, for, you know, subhanAllah, for me growing up, for many years, I was far from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I didn't have Allah in my life. And, you know, on a personal level, because I grew up, you know, everything's either haram and you can't do this and you can't do that. And I had this understanding that Allah is this angry being who just, you know, hated anything and everything and that if you don't do everything exactly how he wants it, then he's going to destroy you and this, that and the other. And, you know, it's unfortunate because that was my own shortcomings and my own lack of knowledge. But that was a big barrier between me and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But then, you know, once you start to learn and you start to come close and you start to understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most loving, is the most caring. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you more than what your own mother loves you. You know? I mean, even your mother who loves you more than anything in this world, even she can't be there for you 24 hours of the day. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never, ever, ever forgets you. You know, there, there, there's, there's, this, <coughs> there's this very beautiful saying where, um, you know, it says, My slave, when you remember me, I remember you. Allah says, I remember you. 
my slave when you forget me Allah says I still remember you I don't forget you you know so once you start to know Allah subhanahu wa you know once you start to know about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his greatness then you come to realize that the only solution to any problem you have is Allah Ali what are your thoughts man? I haven't got any thoughts at the moment I'm just listening to both of you so a person who's on this journey like a sister uh, you know maybe she's 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 uh, she's going through some heartbreak right now maybe a brother who's got some problems uh, financial problems and they listen to what you're saying and they're saying okay you know what I'm gonna I'm gonna try and turn towards Allah now what's the first thing they need to do or what was what what are some advices some steps some action points Look, I, I um, again, you know, me personally, I always like to keep things simple. Don't complicate issues with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, what do I need to do? Well, the first thing is to acknowledge that Allah is the greatest and that we're simple slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, um, that Allah is capable over all things, over anything. And that number one is to sincerely want Allah. So sincerely in your heart, turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now. And sometimes, you know, when you say turn to Allah, people think it's got to be this long journey and it has to be a very detailed. No, just sincerely want Allah in your heart and you will find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there. So just that, you know, um, you know, just really in your heart, want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, turn to Him, seek His forgiveness and ask Allah for help. You know, the, 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 the sad thing is, is that we turn to anything and everything for help. You know, and I mean, I, I, get, I get many brothers all the time. You know, brother, I want to get married. Can you hook me up, man? You know, I'm looking here and I'm looking there. I'm asking this and I'm asking that. You know, and so I always ask, you know, have you asked Allah? And then the brother sort of stops and looks at me and gives me that funny look. And What are you talking about, man? You're like, yeah, you're asking the slave. Have you asked the master yet? You know what I mean? And, 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 then, and, then, and then it's like, yeah, man, you know, I've asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but nothing's coming through. You think, yeah, you know, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hasn't sent you a wife, what hope can I, you know, what hope do I possibly have in helping you? You have to keep asking Allah. You have to keep asking Allah. And sometimes, you know, something that the Muslims need to realize is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves to hear your voice. Allah loves to hear your voice. You know, when a non-Muslim asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to the angels, quickly, quickly, give him whatever he's asking for. But when the believer asks Allah, Allah says to the angels, wait. I, you know, I love to hear his voice. I love to hear him beg. So don't, don't, be, don't, be, you know, don't be depressed or turned off, you know, because I asked Allah once and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't answer it. No, keep asking. And you know what, I just, just, to, just to add on to that, um, because a lot of brothers and sisters may be thinking, you know, like I've wronged. Allah my whole life and like who am I to reach out to Allah and for him to respond to me uh, the ayah in Surah Al-Baqarah the ayah of Dua like really I remember when, when I heard it it really touched my heart Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he said وَإِذَا سَعَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قريب. Allah said when my servant asks about me oh my servant really needs to know that I'm close it's amazing that of all the things Allah could have told us about him, he told us he's close. He could have said, I'm merciful. <coughs> he could have said, I'm mighty. But he said, no, you, right now, if you're asking about me, the one thing you need to know right now is I'm very close. And then as soon as Allah told us he's close, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala found the best thing to say. <laughs> I respond to the call of the caller whenever he or she calls me. Because Allah is close, He's always been there subhanahu wa ta'ala. It doesn't make any sense that we call everyone else and Allah is right there. But the point that I wanted to kind of extract from this was that Allah didn't say I respond to the call of the believer. Allah didn't say I respond to the call of the pious or the, the one who prays or the hijabi. Allah said I respond to the call of the da'i, anyone who calls. So anyone who raises their hands to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah is going to respond to them inshaAllah. And just to add on to that, the hadith of the Prophet sallam, when he mentioned that, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he feels shy 
when a slave raises his hands to ask Allah, Allah feels shy to let his hands return back to his side empty-handed. But from us what's required is the end of the ayah. When Allah said, then my slave should try and believe in me and do good and respond to me as well. It's not conditioned. Allah didn't say you have to be good. Allah just said, you know, you should try and come with that. Uh, you saying, Akhiyah, any thoughts here? No, I'm just like, <clears throat> I was going to ask, like, so what, do, what do you think is <clears throat> causing the youth, like, you know, like, like praying five times a day? Like, why do they find it, like, to, to your experience, why, like, for both of you, any of you can ask, like, what is it causing them? Like, because when we look at it, it's just like five times a day, do you get it? Like, it, it really surprised me, it really shocks me when I, like, hear, like, the basic fundamentals, like five times a day, you can't even do that. And, and Allah Subhanahu doesn't ask for much, you know? Because a lot of people come and say, you know, Allah wants to punish me, Allah wants to punish me. But when we read the Quran, Allah Subhanahu Allah says, what am I going to get out of punishing you? You know, when you look at a little kid, like, you know, I'm not even going to touch. Like, like, what would I get out of it? So it's, it's, it's sad. And it reminds me of a, um, it reminds me of a narration of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when a Bedouin man approached him and he said, oh, uh, Messenger of Allah, what must I do to uh, be a Muslim? And he said, you, mu you must pray five times a day. And he said, I will do that and nothing more. I'll pray exactly five times a day. I won't do nothing more, no sunnah, nothing. And then he said, oh, Rasulullah, what must I do? Uh, what else must I do? He said, you must pay zakah 2.5%. And then he, uh, the Bedouin man said, I will pay exactly that, nothing more. And then he said, what else must I do? He said, you need to fast in Ramadan. He said, I will fast in Ramadan and I won't do nothing more. And then the Prophet said, uh, and he said, what else must I do? He said, uh, if you have the means, go to Hajj. And then he said, I would, if I have the means, I'll go and do that. As the man was walking away, the Prophet uh, Muhammad, peace be upon him, pointed at the man and said, indeed, if you follow this man, you will be successful. And subhanAllah, it's, it's, when you look at it, it's just like the, 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 the basic things that we need to enter Jannah. But unfortunately, a lot of people, they find it so hard. So what, what do you think is the main factor that's causing these people, like the basic things for you to go Jannah, it's become such a burden, like they act like Allah's put a mountain over their head. Like what do you think from your experiences, that is the key things that individuals. This is the reason why they go through that. How can they? How can they battle that? I think for me, in short, <clears throat> it's love. It's the fact that there's no love between us and Allah. Mm. See, when a young man has a girlfriend, he has no problems when she sends him a text a hundred times a day. Yeah. In fact, you hold your phone and you're eager. <coughs> You know, you stay up all night in your bed and you're holding your phone and when the phone vibrates, it's like the heavens have lit up in excitement, you know. Why? Because I want to know, how did she reply to my message, you know. Why? Because there's love there. There's something there that, that's... But unfortunately, when it comes to our Allah, we don't have that love relationship. You know, and, and the thing is, 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 that, <clears throat> is that many of us need to understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not in need of any of us. Don't think that, you know, if you pray or you don't pray or that if I give my charity or that, Allah is the greatest. That's done. That's, that's, that's sealed and that's a given. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not in need of our money and he's not in need of our salah. But from his rahman, from his mercy, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I want you to come and talk to me five times a day. I mean, that's from his love. <clears throat> I mean, you imagine if the president of the United States of America wanted to see you just one time. Yeah. I'm telling you, even the most extreme of Muslims, oh man, did you hear? Did you hear, bro? The president sent me a message. He wants to talk to me. Shh, come on, man. You feel special, right? And that's a man of dunya. But when the king of kings says to you, I want to see you, I want to talk to you, I want you to talk to me, you know? You and I find that as a burden. So I, I, I think it's just, you know, it comes down to our perspective of things you know like i always like to use this very simple example and i'll end with this right that imagine you as a father and again hashalillah of course allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is above any example but imagine you as a father if you had a child do you want the best for your child or do you want the worst yes. naturally you want the best do you want your kid to be happy or do you want him to be miserable no of course any half decent father would want his kid to be the best and that his you know child to be happy so I always say, okay, now you as a father, when your young child comes to you and he says to you, Dad, I want to go to the city at 12 o'clock at night, midnight. Now you as a father, when you stand up and you tell him, no, you can't go, is that because you hate him or is that because you love him? 
Is that because you want the best for him or is that because you want the worst? Now, it doesn't matter from this point onwards, how he feels about it is irrelevant now. Because I'm in control, because I'm in authority, because I'm mature, because I'm, you know, because I'm, you know, because I've been assigned to be responsible over him. You have wisdom that he doesn't understand. Exactly. So I know what he doesn't know. When he says to me, I want to go with my mates downtown mm. at midnight and I tell him no, that by no means is because I don't want him to be happy. Mm. And then we, oh, how come you don't trust me? You know, you know, it, it's, it's got nothing to do with trust. Mm. I know what you don't know. Mm. And I believe that there's harm there. So therefore you can't go. Mm. Now, any father, anyone here in his right mind would understand that and would appreciate the fact and you know, for, for me, it's the same thing. Mm. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to you, don't have a haram relationship, you think it's because he doesn't want you to have fun? No, but because he doesn't want you to harm yourself. Mm. You know, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, this is halal and this is haram, that's out of his love, because mm. he loves you. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I think it's, it's, again, it just comes down to love, you know, and it's knowing that Allah loves me and doesn't hate me, mm. and having this positive perspective when it comes <laughs> to the relationship. Alright, Jazakallah Khair. Um, I think, Alhamdulillah, we covered some nice stuff. I just wanted to uh, conclude, if I may, um, on the issue of love. Um, as a, as, a, as a, perhaps a practical advice for our brothers and sisters. You see, when, like even if, you know, stuff for life, a person finds a girl, <laughs> he doesn't fall in love with her in the moment he looks at her, right? There's a process of getting to know her. But the more you grow to know each other, the more you grow to love one another, right? And again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is above all examples. Um, but why not the same for Allah? The reason why many of us lack a spiritual, you know, that spiritual connection with Allah when we pray, the reason why many of us, you know, we have these problems, but we, we don't know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what I find amazing is that in the Quran, the very first thing that when Allah revealed to the Prophet, sallam, when Allah introduced himself to the Prophet, sallam, as Allah's Rabb, as, as, as the Prophet's Rabb, as Allah's Master, Allah didn't introduce Himself except that the very first word, first command Allah said is, Ya Muhammad, Iqra. Bismi Rabbi Kalladi Khalaq. He said, Read, recite in the name of your Master who created you. So when Allah introduced Himself as the Master of the Prophet, and our Master by extension, the first thing Allah said before he even introduced himself is read. Without no, without studying, you can't get to know Allah. And if you can't get to know Allah, even to just a very basic level, we're not talking about going and becoming a scholar. I mean, just to know that the one that you're standing in front of right now, that your heart is in between his two fingers and he tosses and turns it how he wills. He can turn your sadness into ecstasy in a second. Just to know that the one that you're standing in front of, all the treasures of the earth are with him and he has the key to each and every single little thing. So ask him with conviction that he will respond. And this happens through a process of learning. And you know, that's why you guys have probably heard me banging on about this a lot. You know, I've been advising you guys and encouraging you guys to go and study as much as you can. Study the basics, the fundamental things of the religion. Who is Allah? Who is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? What are the obligatory things that we need to come with? And if you guys don't have local classes, then you know that the online option is there, the Muslim Survival Guide, which is um, the online program that you know we've, we've initiated where you can learn and study the most foundational elements of your religion. So you know, if you do get a chance, if you don't have any classes in your local area, then please go to the link below and, and, and check that out, inshallah. But akhi, before we conclude, do you have any last words? Nothing. I just want to say, uh, Sheikh Hoblos, I love you very much. <laughs> Cute brother, I love you. I knew him, man. Because <laughs> after the camera, he'll, he'll, he'll get upset. <laughs> and you guys, and you guys. By the way, there's like 20 people here. <laughs> and the camera. Any last words? Wallah, it's just that uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you know, all of you. Marakallah, fi. Brothers and sisters, so two action points, inshallah. MuslimSurvivalGuide.com, go to the link below. Also, one ummah. If you want to meet the brother, he's touring around the country, coming to a city near you. Where is it, Akhi? It's Middlesbrough, Halifax, Halifax Birmingham, Birmingham Newcastle. Newcastle, Glasgow, and Aberdeen. And he's coming back to London. Inshallah. 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 We're trying to, right now, we're trying, to, we're trying to twist his elbow to come back to London, Inshallah. Assalamu <laughs> alaikum warahmatullahi Peace. Oh, yeah, wait, wait, wait. Don't forget to click the subscribe button.
Mama made it on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs>